Hey, hey everyone, uh, back with some new uh, content. We're gonna start a new series focusing on uh, this camera. Uh, this is called an Oak D uh, camera. This is an AI uh, powered camera. It's got uh, stereo, uh, stereo mono cameras as well as RGB camera in the middle. Uh, and it can load uh, all kinds of different AI models. Uh, so our goal is to get this up and running. Uh, so part one, we'll go through how to install the necessary libraries. Uh, so Python is the language that all this is written in. Um, and look at some of the examples in the depth AI library. Uh, and then in part two, we'll start um, getting this sending video frames to touch designer so we can uh, work in touch designer and, and utilize all the cool AI stuff that this camera can do. Um, so the uh, I guess to, to start with the um, kind of the, some of the terms. Um, so Oak D is the hardware which uh, I was just holding right here. Depth AI is the uh, spatial AI platform. So it's actually the kind of software that's written on the um, on the board inside the camera. Uh, so we can check out some examples of here. So this is created by a company called Luxonis. Uh, and by looking through some of the depth AI documentation, you get a sense for what all kind of cool stuff this um, camera can do, um, or the, the AI software embedded in it can do. Uh, so typical pose for media pipe, media pipe hand tracking, um, all kinds of different applications. Uh, so this has been used a lot uh, within robotics and engineering fields and so hopefully we can see this a lot more in a type of art and tech um, touch designer community based worlds. Uh, so sign language recognition. So it's uh, it can run the YOLO object recognition model, uh, gaze estimation. So all kinds of different a uh, AI models, anything you can imagine, segmentation, uh, text detection. Uh, so there's so many options uh, with that. Uh, and then here's the various hardwares. This is on the Luxonis shop. Uh, and the one that I am running is this Oak D. Uh, it's the, the first series. Um, so you can see the, the price is um, you know, fairly affordable. Um, the Pro ones also, uh, so it's $100 more, but you can see it has an extra little something happening here. And that is infrared uh, illumination. Uh, which would be pretty cool. So the thing about um, you know these stereo uh, mono cameras on the left and right here are really good at detecting depth uh, only in a well lit environment uh, because it still requires um, there's not actually any infrared signals that are shooting out of these. It's it's still based in pixels, uh, so it does this kind of disparity uh, calculation to to see a pixel, how different is it from the left and right camera. Uh, but with this pro version, uh, using the AI, uh, IR uh, illumination, you could uh, find depth even in a, a poorly lit environment. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, they also have some wide, uh, wide versions, which I think is 120 degrees. Uh, so a lot of cool options. And, you know, if we're looking at something like um, some other camera maybe that might be popular within uh, the touch designer community, uh, Connect Azure uh, is more expensive and um, you know I, I, I find it doesn't have uh, the, the power, it doesn't have the ability to load all these other AI models uh, as this Oak uh, D camera has. So um, that could be a cool cheaper version for various applications. Uh, so let's look down here and so I'm, I'm making this tutorial for you know thinking about my students that might not have any background in Python even definitely people that don't come from a computer science background um, so any of you watching that, that do come from a, a more CS background or know Python much better feel free to correct me wherever I, I make a mistake because I'm uh, I have just kind of learned this on the street myself, um, coming from the, from the art background. Uh, so to get all this running, I'm, I'm working off of the Luxonis docs, which we can see right here. So this this is the the authority. If there's ever any questions, um, if you haven't even really dealt with Python, so just make sure you have 
the latest version of Python uh, running. We're, we're dealing with Python 3. Um, you can look, you can read more about the kind of nuances between running Python 2, Python 3, different versions. Uh, I think I'm still actually running Python 3.9. Uh, it works fine. Um, so whatever, check that out if you haven't updated that in a while. Uh, and then also we're going to be working with an IDE, uh, Integrated Development Environment, where we'll be dealing with the terminal commands and also looking at the actual Python files um, in an IDE called PyCharm. Uh, so you can grab that from this website here, PyCharm. It's from a company called JetBrains. Uh, so download that for whatever platform you have. Um, and let's just go ahead. Maybe I'll, I'll do that and kind of just talk about um, you know, this part C, it's best to create the project on your system drive as opposed to an external hard drive. Um, but let's, let's just open up PyCharm. Let me do this. And let's just go ahead and do new project. Um, and I'm going to do it on my user account. I have a user directory. I have a Python materials uh, folder there. And I'll just call this maybe OKD. Um, and the key thing, um, the cool thing about PyCharm is that it will automatically uh, open a new project creating a virtual environment. Um, so if you're not familiar with this, um, let's investigate what exactly that is. Uh, so I'm opening up. Okay, so I've got PyCharm there. Uh, I'll just close that thing. And to start, I want to go down to the bottom here and there's a little tab called Terminal. And I'll just make that a little bit bigger right now because that's that's really what we care about. Uh, and I made that project uh, using a virtual environment. So we can see here this is VENV. -E so I, I'm working within a virtual environment. So what does that mean? Um, maybe to start, let's, let's install the first required library to get all the stuff working, which is the OpenCV uh, Python library. So uh, CV stands for computer vision. So OpenCV is a open source um, library for doing various computer vision tasks like object recognition and all that good stuff that we're going to be doing. Um, let's go ahead and do that. I'll just copy this and then paste it right here. And I'll just hit return and boom, boom, boom. OK, beautiful. Uh, and that just in installed OpenCV within my virtual environment. Um, so what, what just happened then, if I go out to a different project that is not in this virtual environment and I try to do something with OpenCV, it's not going to work um, because I've just installed that library just in that one environment. So why, why would we do that? Uh, why wouldn't we install that on my entire system here? Uh, and maybe to, to get a sense of that, let's take a look at the Python standard library and this thing called the Python package index, which also called PyPy. Oh, that's a PDF. I can't type more. Okay, never mind. Uh, let's look at up here. So standard library. Uh, so within Python, um, there are a certain number of methods and operations that you can do with this programming language, just like any language. It's finite. You can do a certain number of things. It's highly flexible, um, but maybe you want to do other things with it. There's various developers have uh, created thousands of other libraries. Um, also, you, the, for the core, the standard library, it's, it's nice to keep it very lean. Uh, so it just keeps everything running efficiently. It, it doesn't have functionality that you don't need. Um, but OpenCV is not included in this standard library. So the, the functions required for doing this computer vision are uh, one of the extended packages that Python um, has. So uh, this site, pypy.org, a Python package index, uh, lists, I mean, this, I mean, there's just a lot of, there's a lot of stuff here. Uh, so let's look for OpenCV. We just installed that. And we can see that there are, actually, can I see which version did I just install here? Does that tell me up here? It's, let's go back up. OK, so it looks like OpenCV Python 46066. That was the version that got installed. 
Great. Uh, there are lots of variations of this one package, OpenCV. So let's say for this particular project I'm doing, all these different versions of OpenCV might have slight differences and you run into something where, uh, oh, I, I need a certain version for a certain functionality in this project. But then in this other project, I need to install a different OpenCV version for some slightly different functionality. If I install that on my entire system, then as I'm going between those projects, I'm going to have some errors because one project needs a certain version, the other project needs the other version. And uh, th those things conflict, right? If I have those libraries installed in my entire system. Virtual environments is a way to just create little bounded projects. Uh, the certain version that you need for each project is installed just in that environment and it does not mess around with your other um, projects or your other environments. So in general, it's it's good practice to, uh, you know, any time we're working with Python, work in these virtual environments. Uh, so that's what we're doing. So I installed OpenCV. Great. Let's let's keep going down. Uh, and next, uh, I have already done this, so I won't do this again because this is, would actually download uh, the whole uh, files here. So from GitHub, downloading all the Depth AI Python stuff, and we can see that at a glance. I have this uh, in my uh, user directory. You can kind of see this here, Depth AI Python, so that has all the files. Uh, what we care about today is this examples. It has tons of built-in examples that we're going to play with. And OK, so now we see that folder. And let's play around a little bit inside our terminal here. Uh, maybe just to clear this out, I'm going to hit clear. And OK, so where? Where are we? We are inside the OKD projects. I want to look in my depth AI folder that was just installed. Um, let's do PWD. That gives me my uh, whole path here. I want to go back. So change directory dot dot slash. That takes me back up to Python materials. LS shows me the list of um, files or folders that are in that. So depth AI Python is right there. So let's go into that CD depth AI. Python, oops, I wrote that wrong, CD. Okay, beautiful. Uh, LS, so we can see these are all the things inside my depth of Python. Let's, uh, okay, right now, let's go to examples. Examples, LS. Okay, install requirements is what we need right now, because uh, this is going to uh, give us all of our uh, little things needed, our dependencies needed for running all this stuff. So to actually run, this is a, a Python file, so we can actually run it from the terminal by starting with this uh, script, Python 3. This will uh, call the Python interpreter, the, the application within the program, and it will run this file and do all of the magic that it says in there. So let's do that Python 3. Install requirements. Okay, beautiful. So that was pretty quick. And now we should be able to run the examples uh, in our depth AI Python folder. So to do that, let's look first. There's um, a folder called color camera and then a simple uh, script called RGB video, which is meant to just show, pop up a window showing the RGB camera of our Oak D. So let's try that. Uh, we are in the examples folder. And so again, if we do, oops, LS. Uh, we can see there's color camera. There's different uh, folders uh, have different kind of functionality. Um, so let's let's do Python three color camera, and there's a, a file inside that called RGB video dot py. So I'm gonna run that. OK, so sometimes it says no available devices. So uh, for whatever reason, sometimes we need to unplug from the, 
the back, the USB connection. <laughs> Here we go. So I just unplugged it and then plugged it into a different USB uh, port. Let's try that again. It's Python 3. Oops, I'm not doing that. I'm doing color camera. Try it again. Oh, there we go. And we can see I have great. I have successfully run this. It pops open a little open CV window. Uh, and to get rid of that, I'm just going to hit Q. OK, so that is a successful test, working great. So let's actually. Let's open up that RGB video and just have a quick look at open at what is actually going on in there. Just a little bit. Python materials, depth AI, examples, color camera, RGB video. Okay, great. Uh, so we'll we'll dive more into this in part two, um, but essentially, um, this right here is what is actually popping up that um, OpenCV uh, window. Uh, it has this this label it just says video. Uh, so um, at this stage, you can just go crazy and start playing around with all these examples. Um, so let's do let's do one more. Let's do the the depth one. So if I do that Python three, and I know there's a folder called Stereo Depth, and let me look again in examples. So we go Stereo Depth, and then I want to do Stereo Depth Video underscore. And look at that. OK. So wow, there's like three of me. There's like four of me right now. So that's too much. Uh, but we can see very easily we've, we've uh, got this example running. Go through, play around with all those examples, just get a feel for what's possible. Uh, and then we'll come back in part two and learn how to send this video, uh, these video frames over to Touch Designer and then do stuff with it.